joining us now. Without further ado, check out his Patreon page, buy his book, give them an argument, Logic for the Left. He's also a professor of that very same uh, subject at Perimeter College in Atlanta, Georgia. Ben Burgess. Ben, you ready for your song? No, let's get to it. Come on. <laughs> I will. So please go. Okay. <laughs> you got to restrain me. Debunk all of it. Logic analysis. You're going to show us how to argue it. This is based on data from a bunch of different countries. There's abundant evidence that uh, at this point uh, that that's bullshit. <laughs> Making down these right wing arguments and looking at how they're supposed to fit together. Okay, break it down. 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 Uh, ben Burgess, welcome. Thank you so much tonight. We're going to be talking about. Uh, well, there's an incredible article in Jacobin uh, by Matt Carp. Uh, called Is This the Future Liberals Want, which is the most important piece that's been released of the campaign cycle so far. I'm going to be interviewing him. I'm going to be streaming with him for TMBS next Tuesday at 6 and interviewing him tomorrow on the Majority Report. It's how important I think this piece is. And he engaged with two liberal journalists in the piece, one of whom, Eric Levitz, who I've interviewed and talked to, is, I think, a very smart guy and a very nice guy, and they've had a very civil exchange. Obviously, I agree with Carp, don't agree with Levitz, but that's all in the spirit of healthy disagreement amongst uh, good faith people, which, of course, you're an advocate of in, in your book. Uh, whoa, Ben blowing up. Ben. Ben blowing up. <laughs> ben blowing up. Tell her I say hi, Ben. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so... But then the other person he engaged with is Matthew Inglesius, who's kind of a putz. Do you want to take us from there, Ben? Yeah. So I think that in order to kind of get why Iglesias' response is so ridiculous, besides the, just the fact that it is Matt Iglesias. And you there you go. Uh, which is going to be funny when we get to what he actually says. But uh, – I, you know, you have to kind of get the point of of Carp's piece, which is about the sort of long term dangers of taking the Warren fork in the road instead of the Sanders fork. That um, he talks in the piece with all kinds of historical examples and evidence about how important victories, like for social democracy in Europe, but also in this country with the New Deal, with even as severely as imperfect as they were, uh, you know, Hubert Humphrey kinds of Democrats, uh, where they won all these important social programs because they had this uh, multiracial working class coalition behind them. And he talks about the dealignment uh, of politics that's happened electorally in the last uh, several decades, where increasingly as uh, Democrats you know, cater to uh, suburban professionals uh, as and see them as their primary base, which is a process that in a complicated way goes back to McGovern. And uh, culture war issues uh, are increasingly what, what split um, Democrats and Republicans. And so you don't have these patterns of voting that are based on class uh, in the same way that you did. Uh, and... This goes along with this global pattern that Thomas Piketty talks about, um, about, you know, talks about like, you know, the Brahmin, you know, left, uh, the sort of upper middle class professional managerial types uh, dominating one, you know, once left parties. And maybe they can do an OK job to a certain extent of safeguarding programs that already exist, but they're certainly not going to create anything new. And uh, and Carp connects this in a really like well thought out, interesting argument to the Sanders Warren split, and you know, and he he notes that uh, that Warren like there's a huge income split among their supporters. That Warren does way better with higher income Democrats, uh, and these people like Levitz and Iglesias are kind of arguing that no, 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 that's okay. You know, those people still see their interests being served by robust social democratic reforms. So. You know, with that coalition, you can still win all that stuff. I just want to say, and really crucially, what they also say is that things have gotten so bad that they 
are starting to recognize that even if they're privileged, that some of their class positionality can be related with a broader working class coalition. And it's answered in a very effective way by CARP, both in terms of you know the empirical reality insofar as we can establish an empirical reality in these things, but also conceptually, which is, you know, this stuff was a massive crisis during the Obama era, and the right. professional class and the Democratic leadership had, you know, yes, there were some certain reforms and things like the ACA, but nothing's big picture, nothing aggressive, nothing to deal with what was already an absolutely horrifying situation in terms of diminished prospects and inequality and industrial hollowing out and all the rest of it. And he makes the simple point that, you know, it probably wasn't a sort of gradual evolution of people they, sort of like, sort you know, of naturally start to see that something had to be done. And it just, yeah, they didn't just say, ah, you know what? I'm my, my reading habits, you know, from the Sunday New York times are really starting to change. <laughs> it was because among other things, there was this incredible Bernie Sanders 2016 campaign that activated an entirely new base and re-energized an old one to say, you know what, actually this fundamental guiding framework of liberal technocrats guiding us to small scale solutions in the face of overwhelming capitalist destruction is actually really bad and doesn't work. And he recre recreated the material and strategic playing field. And that difference right there, I just want to highlight because that really does go to the difference between a Marxist and material mode of analysis versus a liberal one. So that even when the best liberal intellectuals like Eric Levitz, I mean, I'm not just being polite. I really have a lot of respect for Eric Levitz, like a lot, but their tendency to still Look, he understands the material component, but he still strongly emphasizes the belief, persuasion, and idea one, which, yes, of course it matters, but the base is at play, and I think we would agree that the base is the driver in a situation like this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so in response to uh, to this article uh, in, in his Twitter thread about it, um, Iglesias basically says uh, says three things. First of all, he claims that there is no income gap uh, between um, between Sanders voters and Warren voters, which is is just false. It's ridiculous. Uh, in fact, the the chart that he brings up to try to show that shows that it's false if you actually look at it. Right? Um, it's true that because Warren has been surging, you know that she's she's caught up among a lot of lower income voters, but. When you look at higher income voters, they're way more Warren uh, than than Sanders. There's just you know there's no question about that. Um, but then uh, then the second thing uh, he uh, he's you know well the last thing he says is oh he's doing the you know the Jacobin two step where first he says the correct thing about how Warren's going to face all these structural impediments, um, but then he ignores the fact that Sanders will face the same structural impediments, which. Uh, to really was the point where I wondered if Iglesias read the whole article, mm -hmm. um, because Carp is very clear about this, uh, and you know the point is that you know you know look he, he's he's you know crystal clear as we all should be that there's no guarantee of victory with with Bernie right that you know we can have a President Sanders and the Sanders agenda could could still fail to happen that you know this is going to be a huge fight to get any of this stuff done. Uh, because of those structural impediments, of course. But Sanders has a conception of what it would take, and he has the kind of political language and program that could actually mobilize that durable, multiracial working class coalition that uh, that Carp is is talking about, and the Iglesias is saying, oh, how does he just assume that you'll have this? No, he's not assuming that you'll have it. He's saying, with somebody who understands what you need, then you might get it. With somebody who doesn't understand what you need, you're just not going to get it. Um, and then the final thing, although it's actually the first thing he says, uh, which is what caught my attention in the first place, because I saw Matt Carp tweeting this out, and he was like, oh, look at... Um, Iglesias slash slinging ad homonyms, and then I was you know I was curious. It's like okay, let's see, because people misuse that <laughs> phrase a lot. <laughs> uh, and 
you know, usually they just use it to say saying something mean. So let's check it out. Is this right? But you know what? Uh, points for Matt Carp. This is an actual textbook ad hominem. Whoa. We finally get an actual ad hominem. That's incredible. Uh, because what uh, what Iglesias says is you know, he's not just saying something mean. He's treating this fact about uh, Carp's bio as if it were a reason to disregard what he's saying, as if it were a reason to think that what he's saying is false. So he said... Oh, you know, I don't need to be lectured. Let me read what he wrote. I feel yeah. a lot of people are offering rote words of praise for this at uh, uh, Carp uh, MG, that's Matt Carp article, before offering devastating rebuttals. I've never known Matt to bend over backwards to be kind intellectual adversary, so I'll just say that it's garbage. Wow. Yep, keep going. Uh, scroll down. Yep, next tweet. Next tweet, okay. Um, for starters, the whole idea of checks note of... Checks Notes, a professor at Checks Notes, Princeton, lecturing other people about the acceptable class composition of a political coalition is so absurd as it can hardly be worth engaging with. Second, the main empirical, empirical claim on which the article is based is false. Yeah, so main empirical claim is not false. Check his chart. It's just not. Uh, once you get to the over $50,000 a year voters, there's a clear, there's a clear divergence. Uh, they they like what Warren is selling a lot more than they like what Sanders is. Uh, but when he says, oh, yeah, no, he teaches at Princeton, so he can't possibly be right when he says that you need a movement that's not primarily composed of people like him. Marx was trained as a philosopher. His dad was a lawyer. He read and wrote in multiple languages. Which is to say nothing of angles. Uh, which is to yeah, say right. nothing of angles, <laughs> which I was, yeah, that's the real heavy hitter. Literally a trust fund baby of factories. Um, so clearly, well, actually, I I will never cite those two on the show again. Apologies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, exactly. Like, this is this is literally the equivalent of right wing idiots on Twitter who think that it's a damning indictment of Bernie Sanders that he owns three houses. That's literally. I mean, honestly, I I actually saw this when you first sent it, and the reason we we wanted to debunk it is please everybody read. This is what liberals want. Well, is is this what liberals want? In fact, it is an incredibly good and correct piece by Matt Carp and the Jackman. And secondly, I mean. Matthew Iglesias, I thought his whole brand was wonk. This literally is, you know, but yet you fly planes. Right, exactly. Like, I mean, literally, that's what he just did. I it's think pretty he's just embarrassing. jealous. You think yeah. he's jealous of that tenure? He's jealous of Carp being <laughs> yeah. at Princeton? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just look, even if Carp were a hypocrite because of this, which is actually not, but even if he were... That doesn't mean he's wrong, right? That actually is the ad hominem fallacy, saying there's this irrelevant negative thing about your biography, therefore the actual position you're taking is wrong. Secondly, it's not even hypocritical. It's stupid. It's, you know, that's like the fact that Bernie Sanders wants to make himself pay higher taxes is admirable. It's not corrupt or hypocritical. The fact that uh, the fact that uh, Matt Iglesias, uh, that Matt Carp realizes that an effective mass movement for social change can't primarily be made up of Princeton professors and their ilk uh, makes him <laughs> perceptive. Right. Unlike maybe a Matthew Iglesias who would like the editorial page of Vox to run policy, which I think actually uh, to run politics, which I think actually gets back to the core of the problem we're dealing with here in the Warren base. But as a final question, yeah. Just a slight tangent, and everybody can jump in on this. Bless you, Matt. It is one thing to say, I think that your theory of change, like, I don't think Bernie can build a mass movement to challenge corporate and capital uh, power. Therefore, I don't think it will work. You will have four years of Bernie, and uh, these things won't be achieved. Okay, we can argue that, and no one can promise a result. Why is it the stumbling block always occurs in these pieces, which is in these skirmishes, which is that the Vox side of the equation never seems to absorb what the actual argument is right. being presented. Like they, even Ezra Klein, I listened to him with uh, 
uh, uh, Nathan Robinson. And it's like, he's getting into all of this stuff about how the Obama team wasn't sure whether they should pressure Ben Nelson or not. And, you know, this stuff is related, but it is a very different proposition. It, it, it is not, we have a hugely popular new president like President Obama who has big fans and maybe you can make somebody's life slightly inconvenient, but then they might turn on you. It is, we are going to have a White House and a power structure that regularly works in concert with millions of people to relentlessly push an agenda across the country. I, it hasn't exactly never been done before because I actually do think some elements of this actually did in fact happen under the New Deal and were really successful. Then in other ways, yes, it's a new fresh model and maybe you think it's not gonna work. But the fact that every single time that this is articulated, they retreat to just, oh, well, you didn't think people thought of this before, and then they'll come up with Obama examples, which aren't analogous, or he'll, st he'll face barriers too, as if anybody is saying, in fact, I think the Sanders people were the ones actually saying that we, we are the clearest about barriers because we don't, we're not talking about corruption in certain sectors of the economy or, or whatever. We're actually saying, yes, literally, the power center of this country and the world is the barrier. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're going to try to go up against it. And if you weren't starting with the barriers, you wouldn't need the grassroots mobilization. That's the whole point. So why can't they understand this? I mean, honestly, like what even even like that piece, I didn't, you know, uh, I didn't want to, uh, you know, get into it uh, earlier. And, you know, but I, I did read the N1 and one uh, plus one piece that that Ryan uh suggested and it's like sure yes that's true there's professional class you know professional managerial class in the sanders coalition and you might be able to get some people involved in a left project that's always been true in fact carp speaks to that too he quotes angles ironically on that in the piece yeah. but I, this is where i'll go real superstructure with you it, it, professional you know this this whole like professional managerial middle class thing it's not just, I mean, when you're talking about Warren's affluent base, yes, that's a material thing. But we're also talking about a state of mind. <laughs> we're talking about people who, when you say we need to take on capital if we want the planet to survive, go, yeah, but that isn't specifically <laughs> uh, spelled out enough for me. <laughs> that's a mindset. And it's a mindset that has been cultivated by a worship of nerdery a worship of credentials, a worship of information without context, a worship of, of vague ideas about persuasion and debate instead of power, and a worship of cleverness at the expense of humanity. Like, that's what it points to. And, you know, uh, so so the PMC isn't just a, a credential or an income bracket. It's very much a state of mind. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, you know, of course you're going to get, uh, you're always going to get like fragments of, well, even people, I mean, you'll even have your Ingleses who are way above uh, the uh, the PMC level, but, you right. know, but it, it's not a question of, of course you'll get, you'll get adherents from all over the place and, you know, you'll, you'll get a big chunk from, you know, academia and whatever. Uh, you know, that's, that, you know, goes without saying that, the, you know, the question is, who is the who's the who's the bulk of it, right? You know, what where are the numbers at? Uh, which is you know one really practically important question. Then the other question is, you know, and I mean this this goes with what you're saying about state of mind, but like maybe kind of you know wrap it up and put a little bow on it, right? You know that it's like who's defining the terms of the project? You know, do you have this kind of um, Obama thing where you have where like you're really like everything you do and the way that you do it and the way that you sell it speaks of this like hushed awe, the presence of credentials, uh, or do you basically think that like a lot of this stuff is not that complicated, and you know, and and it's it's not that uh, that like the ba you know that basically we don't have universal health care because a lot of people make a lot of money off of the fact that we don't. That's it. That, that, that does not require um, advanced study to figure that out. Ben Burgess, appreciate your time as always, brother. Thank you.
All right. Thank you. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.